Greetings! Welcome to another OS Nerd video thing. Boy, do I have a blast from the past here. A 90 miles per hour reckless joyride through memories twisting country lanes. I just hope we don't wreck the car. Uh, no, 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 let's not think that. Let's, let's think nice thoughts. Let's, let's instead have a nice look at this lovely, calming MS-DOS prompt that has come up here. There we are. Okay, so this is an emulated Amstrad PC-1512. It's a machine from 1986 with an 8 MHz Intel 8086, 512 kilobytes of RAM, and two 5 and a quarter inch floppy disk drives. The graphics hardware is a CGA compatible chipset. Um, basically, it's been hacked up to provide all 16 colors in 640 by 200 mode. The emulation is being provided courtesy of the wonderful PCM, and I'll provide a link in the description below. Now, I used to own one of these machines way back when, in the dark times before I had internet access. Uh, I spent many an hour hacking around in BASIC 2, but um, unfortunately I do not have any of my <laughs> uh, creations from back then. <laughs> Honestly, you're not missing much, trust me. Now, uh, GEM itself, or Graphics Environment Manager, was created by Digital Research, and these are the same guys who created CPM and DR-DOS. GEM was first demoed at Comdex in 1984, and its first release, GEM Desktop 1.0, was released in 1985. Now, this is, uh, this is the GEM Desktop 2.0, it was released in March of 1986, and this is what is known as the lawsuit-friendly release. Basically, Apple decided that digital research stole the look and feel of Lisa and Macintosh, and the court agreed. It was settled out of court, and this is the result. Now, with Gem 1, we had these lovely uh, resizable overlapping windows and we could drag things to the desktop. But thanks to the lawsuit, now we have these two fixed size windows. And all we can do is drag between each. We can't put any shortcuts on the, de on the desktop or resize anything or what have you. The only thing we can do is if we click on this diamond, it will increase the size of one of the windows, click it again and it will decrease the size and if we click on this it will take us to the parent folder um, basically pretending that it's closed the window but it hasn't really. Now uh, architecturally speaking uh, GEM is an interesting design one which most other uh, graphical user interfaces of the time lacked See, most other uh, GUIs of the time were tied to specific hardware, and if we wanted to port the GUI from hardware A to hardware B, we'd pretty much need to rewrite all of the low-level code for handling hardware. GEM, on the other hand, provides abstraction. It has a system called VDI, Virtual Device Interface, um, that, that essentially provides virtualized hardware. Well, virtual hardware, not virtualized. Basically, this means that if we wanted to port GEM to a new device, we'd just need to port enough of the low-level code for the VDI to function, and all the layers above it, because they're using the VDI, would just, in theory, work. Now, uh, this is something that most modern GUIs make good use of. On top of the VDI, we have the AES, the Application Environment Services, and these provide the windowing system, the window manager, the UI style, and the actual widgets themselves. Above the AES, we have the desktop, um, which works as a program switcher. Applications at the desktop launches could, if they so choose, use the AES, or they could go about doing things themselves. Now, we could compare the VDI to Windows NT's hardware abstraction layer, and the AES to the Windows API. I have it on good authority that there are applications for GEM, but I do not actually know of any. This system only ships with free, Doodle, Paint, and Basic. So let's have a look at Doodle. So uh, Doodle is a simple drawing application. We can, uh, you know, basically draw 
things and it, allow, it allows the user to change the color maybe yep so we can draw more things um, don't know what that's meant to be um, but the only other option is to erase it which is probably a good thing in this case and then we can quit yay Now, for some reason, this is in the root directory. Um, the next application is Paint, which for some reason is in the Gem Apps directory. Go figure. Um, the Paint application, I suppose it could be compared to every other Paint application available on the PC at the time, or on the Macintosh, like Mac Paint or Windows Paint or what have you. We have various tools. We have a, a Zoom tool. We have a selection tool, a text tool, a pencil tool. Uh, we can change the colors on the pencil tool, but we can't actually change um, the pencil thickness, which is um, a shame, really. Um, we have the eraser tool, so we can get rid of our monstrous mutated um, things, because I don't really want to look at that monster face. It's scaring me. Then we have a line tool. The line tool not only can we change the color for, um, let's go for the cyan. Uh, we can also change the thickness. So we can put a wonderful line there and a, a, a wonderful line here. Then we have the, the paint tool, the paint brush tool. Now this doesn't use the thicknesses, um, nor does it use the colors. I mean, it's on cyan, but it's still black. It actually uses the patterns. Uh, to change a pattern, we can double click on a pattern and then we can do the fun thing of spending hours. Um, um, come on, you know you want to work. There you are. We can spend hours, you know, filling in this for solid color, which is which is great fun. Trust me, I've done this. Um, I think I'll just 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 stick with with whatever this is, and then uh, when we paint it will paint that pattern. Likewise with the um, with the airbrush tool here, except it's meant to look like an airbrush or a spray can or what have you. And then we have the fill. I really like this icon, this, this, this tap icon. And that lets us do a pattern fill as well as a solid color fill if we edit the solids. And here we have our basic geometry editing tools. Uh, rectangles and, and, and rounded rectangles. And I think this is meant to be a circle or an ellipse. Um, this is a freehand draw tool. And this one here is a polygon draw tool. Now I can't remember how the polygon draw tool works. Um, and I don't really want to have to hard reset the simulator. Um, so I'm not going to even bother doing any of those. We do have a couple of example uh, images here. I think I'll start with the tiger because it looks like a tiger. And that's, that's actually fairly nicely done. It must have taken a while to do. Um, okay, so we can only open one at a time. That's a bit. That's a bit weird. So let's close this um, and let's open. This one, which I think was done by Amstrad, and uh, it is quite nightmare material. 1980s zombie woman here with whatever this is meant to be, potted plants. She's standing behind a set of curtains that look like they're straight out of the 1970s. With um, Amstrad with a mutated mass. I mean, I can't really knock it. This must have taken hours to do. Uh, pixel by pixel. Um, yeah, wonderful. This is what I think of this. So the third application, yes, abandon. So the third application is basic. This is the one that I spent most of the time with in when I was younger. Uh, this is Locomotive Basic 2. Now, Locomotive provided the basic interpreter for the Amstrad CPC range and also the Amstrad PCW range, so it made sense for them to also provide basic for the PC range. Uh, this is um, a standard 
basic implementation but it has some features that users of QBasic or Visual Basic would recognize. Line numbers are optional and it also has some graphical user interface elements um, such as mouse handling. So if I load up one of the demo programs um, that has mouse handling you'll see what I mean. So this, this particular application here um, has a whole bunch of mouse handling code. I mean, you can see that it is um, unstructured basic, but it's it's setting up uh, windows and it's, it's, it's got some mouse handling. So I'll just run it and you'll see what I mean. So we get this thing here, which is basically a window. It's not like a menu. It's nothing like this menu at the top. It's just a window with, with areas that you can click on. For example, if I wanted to place just a single pixel, I could click on point and then there you are. I, I, am I? Come on. Yes, there you are. I've placed a black dot. We can also do lines eventually. You have to hold down the mouse button for it to register, um, which is a bit annoying, but this is 1980s tech. And we can do the same for boxes and circles and various other things. Um, yeah, I'm just going to quit this. Like I say, I, I spent a lot of time doing random stuff in, in BASIC. Um, and I kind of wish I could show you some of my old code, but unfortunately I don't have any machines currently available with five and a quarter inch disk drives, so you're not missing much really. It has to be said that I'm not really doing justice to either digital research or GEM at all in this video. Um, this system, uh, the entire the entirety of GEM was provided on two 360 kilobyte floppy disks, so there is a lack of just pretty much anything. Um, so, like I say, you know, it's really not doing justice to what was quite a solid system. Uh, personally, um, the GEM desktop lasted me from 1987 through until like 1994. Even at school when I was using Windows 2, GEM pretty much did what I needed. It lasted me right the way through until Windows 3.11. I hope you've enjoyed watching and feel free to comment below if you have any ideas or suggestions or even if you know where I can find some GEM applications. You're also free to subscribe and like, or unsubscribe and dislike, or any combination thereof. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.